off and remind her you're on mute. <laughs> I would love to get this party started. So good evening. It's March 17, 2022. It is currently 536. And this is the 31st meeting for the Revere High School Project. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, I will do the roll call. And just a reminder that we are also recording. So I'm going to start the roll call with Mike Picardi, who emailed that he is absent. And Mayor Arrigo, I'm going to note as absent. Stacy Rizzo. Here. Susan Gravelisi is absent. Dr. Kelly. Didn't hear you, Dr. Kelly. Uh-oh. She's in the tunnel. I think we just lost her. Um, I will continue down the list and then we'll, we'll jump back. Carl Svensson. Here. John Perella. Here. Uh, Jennifer Hayes, I know, is also absent. Rich Viscay. Here. Don Cermela. I don't see him either. Nick Rystrom. Here. Jerry Visconti. Here. And Patrick Keith. I don't see either, so I'm going to note him as absent. Uh, Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly, we can see you, but you're on mute. Let us know if you can hear us. Well, we can I see your name. Yes, here, here, this sorry. <laughs> no worries. <Yep>. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, we will jump into some housekeeping items. Um, first off, we have meeting minutes from our last meeting, which will be the March or February, sorry, 24th, uh, February 24th meeting minutes. Motion to approve February 24th minutes. Motion to approve made by Stacy Rizzo. Do we have a second? Stacey, sorry, I, can I, I, I can't. I'm sorry. Motion. I can't make the motion. I'll make the ah. motion. Okay, Dr. Dr. Kelly made the motion, Carl Svensson second. Thank you for the reminder. All right, and we will do a roll call for approval of meeting minutes by Stacy Rizzo. Yes. Dr. Kelly. Yes. Carl Svensson. Yes. John Perella. Yes. Rich Viscay. Yes. Nick Rystrom. Yes. Jerry Visconti. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. We will move on to next agenda item, which is uh, proceeding to vote on approval of February invoices. Um, I can. Uh, they were attached to the email. I can put them up on the screen if somebody is uncertain. Um, we will start with the February invoice for left field, which covers professional services from February 1st through the 28th in the amount of 21000 Do we have a motion to approve for processing? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Rich, and second by Carl Svensson. And we will do yet another roll call for approval, starting with Stacy Rizzo. Yes. Dr. Kelly. Yes. Carl Svensson. Yes. John Perella. Yes. 
Rich Viscay? Yes. Nick Rystrom? Yes. And Jerry Visconti? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. We will move to the next invoice, which is Perkins Eastman's invoice uh, for February services, which is in the amount of $45,727.50. Do we have a motion to approve that invoice? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you very much. And roll call for Stacy Rizzo. Yes. Dr. Kelly. Yes. Carl Svensson. Yes. John Perella. Yes. Rich Viscay. Yes. Nick Rystrom. Yes. And Jerry Visconti. Excellent. Thank you very much. That brings us on to much more fun things <laughs> than <laughs> housekeeping items. So, um, Brian, will you uh, take it away? Don, do, you, do you want me to jump into it? Uh, Don or Dan, do you, who, who wants to drive just real quick? Because mo I, I have a few slides to cover and then um, Perkins Eastman's going to be um, running a little bit of an update here. I can put it on the screen. I think I'm in charge of this. <laughs> it's on you, Dan. Yep. I can I handle it's on me. two slides. Yep. Okay. Let me. Uh... I don't see the option to. Oh, yeah, I do. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay. I guess everyone can see my screen. Yep, it's coming up. Yep, it's there. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to jump into, um, you can move ahead from this one, Dan. Um, we're going to do a really quick update on the uh, procurement of the construction manager at risk, the CMR or CMAR, as you hear a lot of us talk about it. Um, we have the inspector general application and proceed is going in in the morning. It's basically done. It was pretty much done a uh, week, week or and a half ago, but uh, I wanted to get the, the MSBA report in and make sure some of the details we had and they were tied into the report. So we're going to be running the um, procurement of the general contractor in parallel to getting inspector general approval to proceed. Um, so basically, this is the, the quickest way we can do it. And Dan, if you could click forward, there's just a few a few dates. Um, it, two meetings ago, we established a subcommittee for general contractor CMR selection as our Mayor Rigo, Nick, Don, Carl, and Jerry. And we'll be sending out some emails to that subcommittee um, to basically show some of these documents that are going to get on the street. But we're going to uh, have everything advertised next week and uh the march 24th is pretty much when we'll we have to have everything into the central register but we'll also be coordinating a re revered journal ad um long story short you can almost zoom to the bottom of this i'm not going to go through each date um but we'll keep the committee posted on all these interim steps we're shooting for somewhere around may 18th to get some subcommittee meeting or meetings together um to pre-qualify uh, these firms. This this is a two-step procurement process. We have to qualify general contractors, then we issue them um, a request for proposals, and then we select one based on the proposal. So this first screen is really about pre-qualifying. We're going to launch it in the coming week, and um, we look to be getting the committee together to pre-qualify folks that plus or minus April 18th. Uh, if you could click forward, Dan. Thank you. Um, the second phase of this is actually issuing the RFP, the request for proposals. After we pre-qualify, um, only those pre-qualified contractors will be able to reply and uh, apply for the job. Um, we look to get that all launched by pretty soon, right after we determine um, who's qualified, who's not. Chances are um, most of the firms that qualify are going to be the ones that know they can handle it. but. We might have some folks that are a little too small for this job that might not get pre-qualified. 
Uh, once we have the pre-qualified field, we'll issue the RFP um, to those firms. And again, just zooming down, there's a lot of interim deadlines here, but zooming down to the bottom at some point in the middle of May, May 12th through May 17th is where we have it on the calendar. We're going to convene that subcommittee and do interviews and make some final decisions or a recommendation back to this committee to um, take on a specific construction manager. So we will coordinate a building committee meeting for right around these middle of May, third week of May dates. Uh, and ultimately the recommendation from that subcommittee will come back to this committee. At that point, we will have a contractor on board to help us out with the rest of schematic design pre-construction, estimating, uh, logistics, et cetera. There any questions on um, CMR? Again, I'm gonna be reaching out to the, the mayor, Nick, Don, Carl, and Jerry uh, about some details here, but uh, for now, we just wanted the building committee to be familiar with the sequence and the dates here. Brian, uh, a couple couple meetings back, you know, we were talking about the cost of the CM at risk and also the ED costs and survey costs, et cetera. Uh, do you have a, a, a spreadsheet tonight or can you, you know, get us one that sort of shows where we are with these costs and the remainder of the budget for feasibility? Sure. We, we don't have one tonight, Joe, but I can circulate it. And it, uh, long story short, we put some costs in front of the building committee a handful of weeks ago. Um, everything related to eminent domain, which right now means um, hiring a, a firm to do a land use study, appraisals and legal services is being borne by the city. Um, that leaves the project and the money that we have available to hire the CM and to get some of the testing done if we can during SD. So we're in pretty good shape because that eminent domain process is being um, basically um, covered outside of the feasibility study budget. But I can put together uh, an estimate. What I will say is we're all pretty confident um, after talking amongst ourselves and talking with some of the CMs out there that uh, the cost for these pre-con services, at least for the next six, seven months, schematic design, we pretty much can name our price. Um, and we're, we're probably gonna put it out there somewhere in the realm of 25 to $30,000 for the SD phase. That works with our budget. It leaves some money for testing and other items, but we did a little bit of calling around and um, generally speaking, the big CMs know that uh, they'll take this on even if we're squeezing them a little bit up front. So bottom line, we think the feasibility study can afford all this, um, especially being that the eminent domain stuff is covered outside of the budget, but we'll have a, um, we'll circulate a little update on that. Thank you. Any other questions on uh, CMR? If not, we can move it along. I'm gonna skip right past that intro slide. Um, we're um, kind of gearing up to start up the user group meetings and the SD kind of work plan meetings and working group meetings as well as user groups. Um, so what, one of the things I wanted to do tonight was introduce some of these meetings that I'm, you know, I'm trying to schedule, and this is my suggested schedule, which I hope everyone can do. Um, I've already reached out to try to set up the first site meeting, uh, this engineering meeting next Wednesday with Nick and Don, and whomever else would be interested in that. And I think tonight, if we could set up some of these working groups that we've spoken about before, and try to solidify that. And also if, um, if we, everyone could give me some feedback, if my time choices, you can see I'm, go, I'm aiming for like an earlier morning or kind of after school block, like a two to three and early in the morning, like a nine. I could do earlier than that if we need to, but that's usually a pretty decent start time if those times are okay. And then as it relates to overall user group interviews and user interviews for the school staff, uh, we'd like to know who is going to on the district side coordinate all those meetings for Dawn and Bob and whoever else on our team is going to run those particular those meetings. There's a lot of those and those are scheduled to happen or we'd like to have those start to happen soon. So there's a whole bunch of questions there. I can um, work with Amber Jakin on the coordination and, you know, making sure there's a room available and notices go out and all of that. 
Um, and I know that um, Jen, who couldn't make it, who couldn't be here tonight, wants to be the on the uh, interiors, exteriors working group. And she reached out to Linda, and so we can just start a list. Um, okay. It, and or have a point person that control, you know, controls a list for their group. However, um, you want to organize it. I think the hope was that we'd get a point person for each one that we could reach out to and coordinate. Um, but tell me if you think differently, Dan or Brian. No, I think that's fine. If Jen can be the interiors working group one, um, point person, I know Carl is the MEP working group point person. Um, we want to have one for site because the site is highly complicated and there's a lot of things going on. And I think there's, that's warrants a working group here and um, maybe a separate person for exteriors and then another for sustainability. I'd like to nominate um, Stacy for the sustainability working group. I know she's been doing a lot of work in that area. If she doesn't mind taking that on. Stacy, does that sound okay with you? <laughs> we don't necessarily need motions for any of these. We just no. want to know who to bother. I know who to bother. Yeah. <laughs> Diane, you're such a giving person. Um, I was just, I was double checking the day to make sure I was available, but I can. I'm sure with Diane's guidance, I I could be very successful. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. And Stacy, I just, like to, I I just we... like to recognize people's talents, Stacy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stacy, I, I think there's some yeah. there's flexibility on this, Dan. Right? You're yes. just trying yeah. to put these something are just down. I'm, I'm just trying to get yeah. something out there so we can this, have something to talk about. And, and if these yeah, work, it's not set in stone. Excellent, <laughs> but they're not set in stone. And Stacy, no, if you no could try to kind of collect some more people who you think would be good for this committee, um, or this this that would be good. That'd be excellent if you could. Yeah, I'll also add four or five people. It's um, it's always good to to have people, even you, though you think it might not be your specialty. So many of these things connect back to the education, educational or energy Absolutely. goals, and you know, to keep them on the on the forefront. You know, we need to have a diverse conversation. You know, of mm -hmm. people. Can I, it's related to sustainability. Can I ask a question? I was digging around on the city's website the other day and couldn't find anything. Is there a city sustainability director or role of someone in the city that um, might be able to participate in this? Does anyone? There know? might be one or two um, might not be under that name, but I okay. think there may be one or two people that could help us out with that. Okay, I know in the in the larger master plan there was a lot of talk about sustainability, uh, sustainability, resiliency, mm -hmm. etc. But then when it came to like who, <laughs> I couldn't find anything. So I, and I've looked a couple times. So if Stacy, if you know of someone or have have a connection, by all means, um, anytime we can weave into the city's greater goals uh, with this project, that would be really mm -hmm. helpful. And or reach out to resources. Um, so. Yeah, that'd be great. No problem. And I'd just like to throw in that, like, we're, we're looking for a, a point person from the committee for this. Part of what we'd, we'd like that point person to help us with for any topic, whether it's MEP or sustainability, interiors, exterior site, is help us understand who from the city, who from the school, who's not on this committee, should be involved with these meetings. These are really intended mm -hmm. as working meetings. It doesn't have to be restricted to committee members, um, it, it shouldn't be. And a lot of them that engage um, education will have all sorts of people from the school from. So I think really like, I, I'm not sure if, if Don and Dan, you agree or disagree. Um, it looks like we have what we need, except maybe for a point person for site design and exterior Sorry. design. And I think site yep. design is something that maybe talking about who the right person to try to filter that through. It's all going to come back to this committee. Exterior design, maybe folks can mull over a little more, um, but site design is one that I know we're going to be getting hot and heavy on very fast. I think we need someone to to be yeah. assigned to that um, at this meeting. Exterior can wait. In, in the site, we're always, again, going to involve folks from the school. So I, I might even just throw out there for conversation that 
it might be good to have the person who's coordinating site be one of the folks from the city. And I am hate to put people on the spot, but, you know, Nick, Don, um, some other folks that are on the public works end of the site might be a good person to help us work through some of that because, I mean, there's site finishes and amenities, but a lot of this site is going to be how do we handle and how do we lay it out so that we're we're dealing with stormwater correctly, et cetera. There's a lot of things underground here too that connect back to the city and serve the city mm -hmm. in some other capacity. So I think that that'd be good I to- I feel like- um, Ryan, I can be the, I can be the, um, the point person for that. Uh, this is Nick speaking. Yep. And uh, anything related to this technical stuff, Carl's going to be involved too. Other folks from the school are going to be involved, but uh, I, I think that I, I like it being someone who knows the inner workings of um, how we technically have to pull this off. So if folks don't have an objection, Nick, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but. No problem. Happy to do it. Okay, great. So we've got four out of five. We'll wait for number five. What's the uh, fifth one again? Exterior. We're really talking building there. Exterior design. Building exterior. Yep. yep. Aesthetics. Yep. And that, and that one again, that can wait a little I'll bit. I'll put that in doesn't... a pitch. That's one of the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, that and interiors, they can arm wrestle over who has the most fun. <laughs> you see, we don't get to okay, that. We don't get me, to one of those me. until April. <laughs> <laughs> coincidence that i'm gonna be running those two but <laughs> i think i just heard stacy volunteer to do that one also yeah, she could do two I, I can be part of a team okay all right Perfect. awesome we'll take that thanks stacy so so uh, i had her at fun i think and you know what? Yeah. I think Su I think that Susan's not here, but I bet if she was here, she would volunteer to do that as well. Okay. Well, maybe Susan yeah. and Stacy can collaborate and figure out who should who's be got on, the who time else should and, be on that. Yeah. Yep. yeah, they can certainly both be on it, and maybe one is the point person. And yeah, you know. mm -hmm. great. Joe, were you going to yeah. say something? Uh, Dan, just just to uh, confirm all this, will you be sort of publishing okay here's our leads telling them what the deadline is for filling out their teams just so you know we leave this meeting where you it, it's very clear to everyone who's the lead of what when they have to have a team together etc because a lot of moving parts here um, what i'm hoping uh, joe is that this is that we can hit these four meetings but i can get that out tomorrow or monday but we can we can all agree who, and, uh, that these four meetings are going to happen next week. That Carl will be ready for a MEP meeting on Tuesday, and Nick will have a group ready on Wednesday and Friday for the site. Well, good that you tell them now. <laughs> and how? What size of a team would be appropriate for each of these? Are we looking at like three or four people? Plus I think the lead, that, so five feels total. Like a, maybe, yeah, maybe five. I, I was thinking maybe five to between five and seven. Okay. So seven being on the high end. But it, it depends. I mean, I think the site could definitely support seven depending on how many, what the expertise are that are being brought to the table. I was going to say that at least. I think this is true in working groups that, you know, as you need expertise, if there's like a city yep, engineer or someone that you need to bring in um, to, to be part of the discussion, but they're not on the building committee, I, mm -hmm. you know, using yep. them as a resource. That's why I was asking about uh, any sustainability director or anyone on that end from the city um, that, you know, they can have a voice at the table and participate with their expertise. So. Yeah, I would fully expect that the that the other four or five people are not on this committee. They're just there are other people who are interested in the site or have expertise or knowledge about the site or the that area of the city or for that site group. And same goes for the other groups. Yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, Tech Lang, who is the city planner, mm -hmm. would and uh, understands what the long term planning is for the city and uh, all of that would probably be a good person to have on the site committee. That's perfect. 
and I'm yep. sure um, Nick has some people in his department or um, Don Donnie Wood that can um, facilitate with that as well. Exactly. Okay. And I, I think a lot of these meetings are going to be very few of these are one shot deals. So a lot of it might be mm -hmm. sitting down with the, the point people next week, whoever can make it can make it. And those people will probably leave that meeting saying, you know what, I need to get X, Y, and Z people involved next time or, or get some, that, that's sort of the goal is to really debrief on what we need and have the folks from the city who know some of these different departments and places within the school to bring other folks to the, uh, into the fold in the next number of months. Yeah, in the case of the site, I wanna, I wanna get to all the questions and concerns that are out there on the table and have an have action plan to answer those questions and attack those concerns. So as long as I'm volunteering everybody for stuff, I think it would be good to have either Jerry Visconti or uh, Pat Keefe on that team as well, because they're gonna have the perspective of the city council. Mm -hmm. On the site one? Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Diane. You, Jerry, anytime <laughs> I can help you're you. You're doing a hell of a job. Let me <laughs> you. Right. Stay long enough. <laughs> I do should, think we nominate, should we nominate Pat? <laughs> He's not here. There you go. I think we should. Yeah. I think we should too. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And we'll blame Diane for that. Listen, I'm just trying to have the right voices in the right places so that we, this can go as smoothly as possible. <laughs> I'm yep. it, it, and again, well all, all, all this is going to filter back to the building committee. I just want to reiterate with folks, this is really, you know, we, these meetings are, are long enough, but, um, you know, to get this job successfully planned, we need a lot of time with folks. So uh, it's a lot easier to get down into the nitty gritty with some smaller groups, bring it all back to the building committee and there'll be regular updates at committee meetings on what are we talking about MEP? What are we talking about site? What are we talking interior exterior? So it'll all come back to this committee. I think we have what we need. Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll keep populating this work plan. And as we go through them, I'll strike them out as we finish them or, and I'll move them if we don't finish them. And I'll just keep going. It's a much longer plan, but I only I'm only showing you the, to the first next meeting, and then a little bit beyond. So it'll keep getting populated as we move forward. But once we have the working groups, it'll be a little bit more like I'll get to them directly and give them the information right off with when the dates are. And you'll probably just see this as a background with reports. Um, back to the. Just the overall schedule. Um, we talked a little bit about when the user meetings are going to, when the uh, the user group meetings are going to occur. Uh, this is all has been slid a little bit forward, so I'm a little bit more eager to get this started because last time we were further back, we had, I had these starting in the end of February and early March, and now we're in mid March, so I feel like we're um, a little bit now under the gun to get really going on these. So, and then we have that still so that bar for the uh, actual user interviews is uh, beginning in, as I said, beginning in April and going through early March. Just, just to make sure everyone's understanding at least the language we use, the working group meetings are committee, city, school, user, when we say user, it usually means school. So, so a lot of the user meetings are meeting with teacher groups, administrative groups, et cetera. And we're really talking nuts and bolts of how the school works. So just wanted to throw that out yeah. there. Teachers and staff. Yep. And we've done a round already in feasibility with them. So this would be round two, whether it's the same group or not, we'll look to you guys to tell us. But this is two, I think we usually do four rounds total throughout the design. So this will get us to, you know, it, it, previously we just talked about general building uh, topics. Now we'll start to talk about where their space might be in the building now that we have, you know, um, uh, floor plans that we're moving forward and how big their space is based on the space template. So we'll start to get into more detail. And then the next round, we'll actually have layouts within the room to talk about and systems to talk about. So they ju it, it just dives deeper every single time. And then the final one's kind of, you know, set in stone, any last minute changes and then sign off on the, the final layout of each space. So just for everyone's knowledge, that's kind of the progression of these. In most of this, we, we will be filtering through 
you, Dr. Kelly, and and I think um, John, Jennifer, Carl, on on various capacities will come in and out of that. But I think um, going through the people on the committee who are in the school to say what are the right faculty groups to bring into these is is what we plan to do. Sounds good. So I'll take over from here. Uh, so we're moving right into schematic design as we talked about last time. Uh, those that were here in February saw some of the precedent images and the concept. So we're going to give you a site update, some building plan updates and tell you what we've been up to. So Dan, I'm gonna ask you to keep uh, driving just so we don't have to switch screens again. Um, just as a reminder, I think most of you saw this diagram from the site circulation kind of at the tail end of the um, the PSR uh, phase, once we had definitively decided the project would be on uh, the Wonderland site, we looked deeper at some of the grading, recognizing that um, grading will be a major issue here, elevating the building. Um, just for reference, the, the circle numbers are proposed um, uh, elevations. So recognizing the building would need to be elevated 10 or 11 feet high due to the, um, the flood plain. Um, and also looking at site circulation and how we'd navigate getting up those 10 or 11 feet. So from that evolved a version of the site plan that I'm going to talk about tonight. There's a, um, another option underway that we're looking at something that's possibly a little bit different. But if you want to go forward, Dan, I'll show what was put together at the end of um, PSR. And it's essentially the diagram just um, in a more formal and final version. So I'll walk you through the um, entry is on the uh, far right across from the MBTA Wonderland uh, proposed uh, stoplight there. You'd come in. Thanks, Dan. Um, you'd, you'd come in and circulate around the baseball field. So the two fields are at plus eight. The red numbers are the vertical elevations. Um, that street level entry is at plus seven, give or take. So about a foot higher. So you come into the site and rise about a foot. There's distributed um, parking, surface parking lots uh, around both fields, both the multipurpose and baseball fields. And then as you rise up to the plus 15 that the building is on, and just for reference, I know I said 10 or 11 feet, we're talking off of um, uh, sea level now. So the numbers are a little bit different, but they're they're the same verticality, if that makes sense. So the building's plus 15 off of the, um, off of the, the ocean, basically, um, off at sea level. So to get you up those seven feet from the baseball field at plus eight to the entry at plus 15, we have a vertical drive and then bermed in seating. Dan, would you point out on the baseball field, um, kind of on the west side, there's seating along that sort of seven foot differential as well as between the building and the multipurpose field to the north of the building, um, south of the field. Perfect. Thank you. So using that difference in grade to kind of berm in some uh, seating to spectate uh, if there are sports being played there. So the cars would circle up around that middle island, which is basically built up as a, as a grassy berm. Uh, car drop would happen at the front entry, the main entry right there. Thank you, Dan. And then exit out um, and down along the campus road and back out onto BFW Parkway. The buses would not make that loop, but rather come around the building from the east. Um, they'd come in the same way, travel around. Yep. Nope. Nope. Go back and take a little left. Dan yeah. <laughs> and then come around there and drop to the south of the building. Just recognizing that car and bus drop. Um, from a safety standpoint, it's preferred to have them separate. Um, both of them enter into the heart of the school, that dynamic space that we keep talking about that's connected to all the major program spaces. Um, so both of them would enter into that space and allow students to then navigate their way around the building. Um, Don, is, the, is the bus drop covered? Is that a... It can be. Yeah. So we need to, some of the details of what's happening, typically we'll cover at most entries for the sake of you know, weather protection. And if students need a little extra time getting out of the car, um, you know, just to try to do their best, the bus drop, if we do have a, a some sort of canopy or covering, obviously it would need to be much higher um, mm -hmm. if the buses were to travel under it or at least out to the sidewalk level. So to be determined, Diane, is that preferred? Sure. Because we could Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
Um, what still needs to be worked out is some of the service area, um, whether it's down at the, yeah, plus, you know, the, the parking level or up at the um, plus 15 level. So um, still sort of working through the service um, uh, complexities there. There's a loop road that takes you all the way around. That's where Dan was trying to drive when I was trying to get the buses <laughs> going. But there's literally a loop road um, both for fire and central navig, you know, just navigating the site. Um, there are multiple outdoor learning spaces, both the learning courtyard between the gymnasium wing and the and the classroom bar. Thank you, Dan. And that can be elevated. We're looking at a version where maybe it terraces down, which could be quite nice. We have the outdoor learning up near the, um, but off of the multi-purpose field, south of the multi-purpose field, Dan, like kind of near the front entry. Yep. Um, so there are multiple learning spaces to, to tie to the education as well as multiple bioswale spaces. And we recognize this isn't enough to control all the stormwater. We do, um, we need to study the stormwater, um, uh, closely <laughs> and recognize that that's not enough to, to, um, to capture all the stormwater, but looking at structures maybe under the multipurpose field and or baseball field that can help capture some of that. So that's very much underway and going to be a big topic at some of the site uh, working meetings that we just started to set up. Um, and then you've got those tennis courts and um, surface parking. We still have under building parking, which really is at the, I think it's at the plus two level if my team's here, maybe they can correct me. Um, but it's basically at grade, at grade, but under building, if that makes sense. And we have a floor plan that will demonstrate that in a moment. Yeah, we talked about bringing that, it, right now that area of the site is about four, which, you know, then that's why the building's at 15. It's 11 feet higher than that four. Yep, the plus. The, um, that we talked about potentially lowering that under under building parking area by a foot or a foot and a half or two feet to kind of start to try to balance out where we're filling the site. Cause we need to have a, a basically a net zero fill site. We can't make anything higher or fill anything. We have to leave it exactly at the same kind of level. So anytime we build a pile like this pile, we need to have that negative somewhere, that same volume, that cubic footage volume has to be neg like netted out to zero. So one way to do that is to take this whole entire footprint and basically chop a foot or a foot and a half out of that. And that'll give us some play as to where we can kind of berm up in some of these bermed areas. But we're, that math is still underway. Right. A couple other small things before I see if anyone has any questions. There's under building parking access from the west. Uh, those arrows. And there's also a navigating health and wellness pathway around the entire campus. And that will always be there and the details of it will, you know, will develop. Um, but just want to recognize that that has not gone away. That's still part of the process, as well as working with the MBTA on a future train station. I know Dan's been in conversations with them about um, connecting to that. This doesn't necessarily recognize where that is because we don't know yet but our plan is to from a pedestrian standpoint to definitely connect um to that with the health and wellness pathway and campus connections it's also worth noting um from an accessibility standpoint that all of these walkways that uh, navigate the plus eight up to plus 15 um they're all one in 20 so they're accessible pathways um, which means that one, if one is um, using a wheelchair, they can navigate it safely and um, it does not need handrails. It's uh, shallow enough that one can um, travel along it independently. So I think that's a huge bonus, um, especially also, given some of the vertical challenges we're facing here. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Dan. Well, that's one of the things to mention about the size of the site and the, the, some of the discussions about shrinking this site down. We're trying to make it smaller. The um, that's one of the luxuries of the site size that it's at right now is that we're able to to change the grade and, and massage the grades so that you don't have stairs and rails and ramps everywhere to get up to these elevations. There's enough run to get up to some of these most all of this without without rails, ramps, and stairs everywhere, which is really nice because it won't feel. You won't feel like you're approaching a building and going up a big staircase. You would feel you wouldn't really feel that difference from the entrance over here to that building entrance. That seven feet is going to disappear. 
versus and that's if a, it was much, much closer. That's a great segue to have Nazra highlight some of what we're building as far as a 3D model. So Dan, I put a placeholder in the presentation, which is this, um, but if Nazra is able to share her yep. screen. Can I ask actually ask a yeah. question if we could Absolutely. go back to the previous do you need slide? To do you need to go well, back to the previous? we don't necessarily need to go back i think i can okay. verbalize it but um okay. i'm thinking about staff entry mm -hmm. um and they would likely be using the under building parking that's what we're assuming so would they enter in the same place as the parents and the buses because i'm just thinking if th that might be a log jam um, and I'm not sure if there's a street that runs all the way into the site from like running parallel to the railroad tracks. There if we is. would think about making that an entry for staff. If we can traverse that piece that we're not um, developing and if we're able to get some sort of, you know, um, rights to an extension of that. I forget the name of it, Brian. You may know it off the top of your head. Um, to the street here, yeah, it, it comes still about done. Done there right. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, so we'd actually so done road. further down than that. And this is a perfect topic, Nick, that we're going to follow up with you on talking mm -hmm. site because I, I think it's a good point. We might we might have some relief in off the backside of the site, figuring out if we can and who uses it, I think will give us some flexibility here. Going to the courier question, Dr. Kelly. Great, thank there, you. There is an ex there's an existing right-of-way there that extends significantly into the site uh, yeah. already so, oh yep. yep great i think it gets here if i'm not wrong it's like I think cut you're right. through till somewhere around here yep great so okay. that's a perfect site working group <laughs> conversation <laughs> because we've identified that street and had conversations about it and said could we um you know could we potentially get students to not have to sit or not just students, like anyone accessing the site to not have to either sit in traffic or be in the log jam that you allude to, Diane. Mm -hmm. um, the, there is down near the tennis courts that you can see on Nasra's screen right now, there is access there, but I do recognize it may not be ideal from that standpoint because you have to get around the rotary to come back to it. I think unless we do a turning lane or there should be an additive um, stoplight at that intersection, that's the shopping plaza, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe yes. there's a light there now, but we, when we met with Mass DOT, we definitely talked to them about crossing um, the road and having crosswalks and the light. So there's potential to um, have access there as well to just come in the backside and get under the building for the staff, yeah. Diane. So yeah. some of that's still being determined based on traffic study, you know, road access and um, site access. But that's and a great John, question. Um, yeah. You or Nell can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but the, um, the, what would probably be the faculty parking under the building has a significant stair up to the heart of the school, but it's, it's a little bit, it's separated from the main entry. So people will arrive at what feels like the heart of the school, but it, it should be, you know, it should really break up the volume pretty good. You're talking about from a, um, people from a, a yeah, I think that was part of what Diane was asking. You know, how are the teachers going to enter the building? And they'd be coming into the heart, but through a somewhat of a main stair from the garage, you know, the, the parking level versus the main entrance. And there would be um, elevator service there as well, I imagine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, apologies, I missed that detail, Diane, about entering the building versus entering the site. So yeah, I did. <laughs> I understood it as a car no. traffic problem. <laughs> yeah, that is what I meant on. I did mean oh, a car okay. traffic problem, but um, that's helpful too. <laughs> yeah, no, the, it's all good because we want the experience to be great, whether yeah. they're coming by car or once they get out of their car. So great question, Diane. And it's definitely still something we need to study more and, um, you know, uh, get to the bottom of as far as access. So this is if I can the... quickly just close the loop on Dunn Road. Oh, sure. Uh, just Thanks, a heads Nick. up. I want to just let you guys know that the Dunn Road actually extends down probably closer to oh, yeah. uh, almost the middle of the that uh, multi-purpose field. It goes further than that. Oh, it makes its way that... almost down. It goes past. Uh, it ends. It's it's undeveloped right now, but it uh, makes its way on paper down to you know, past the first end. Uh, corner of the Amazon building. So you're somewhere closer to so somewhere the, here. Um, multi purpose oh, field. Yep. 
I'm not sure what that will do to the development to the north, whatever that future may bring, but that's really helpful. And if there's a way to provide another access point, I know that that's something that's of concern here, that you're sort of landlocked with the um, rail. The, well, it's, a, it's existing railroad. city property, so I think that's beneficial. Awesome. That's great. Thank you, Nick, for that. Okay. I will try not to make anybody dizzy. <laughs> so, uh, Nazra, I'm going to, you can certainly chime in. I'm just going to set the stage. This is our site model that we've been building based on um, the site option that we just showed you, um, just so that we can understand in a, you know, in a third dimension how this building looks and feels when it's one elevated and two within the context of the city. So, um, Nazra has been working her magic um, from a massing standpoint. You can see the building. Maybe you could zoom in a little bit. Nazra, now that mm -hmm. we're sort of, I know it's a little bit jumpy because it's probably a large file, but you can start to see, and it's hard to even see the elevation. And to Dan's point earlier, um, there's well, I can, enough, yeah, I can yeah, drive us through land. it a little bit so you can, uh, uh, cool, very cool. You oh, can get great. a feel of it. Mm. Um, okay, so hopefully it cooperates. It is a big file, um, and then. You go to looks like a windy day too. I was gonna I comment know, I was on gonna the, the leaves blowing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the car loop, and I'm gonna zoom out a bit, go up, see, all the way to the main entrance. Um, the berming that Don was talking about, you can see it goes up, but then it, it gets you from the seven all the way up to the main entry without making it feel like a ramp. And the building is just masked for simplicity, just for everyone's yeah. sake. <laughs> Those are the floor is, plates yeah. you're looking at. That's the four-story um, classroom wing. Four-story the... volume versus yeah. three-story. So there'll be a little bit of visitor parking, handicap accessible parking at the front, um, just for yep. ease of not having to navigate the full they site. They come here. Yeah, for visitors. In there. Um, and so then that car loop follows back around. So you can, oh, just in that view, you can see the the built-in seating um, that I spoke yep. about at the at the fields. Um, there's enough property here that it doesn't feel like you're going up 11 feet and we're intentionally trying to, you know, make it feel natural. Um, but, you, you know, standing here, you do see that a four-story building is, that's elevated, does feel substantial. But hopefully- Can I ask a quick question, Jerry? Sure. Hi, uh, hi, Jerry, please. Yes, how are you? Uh, Go ahead. Added in, in in comparison, um, um, and looking at the underground parking as well. Do we have a number of parking spaces that are underground, as well as how many are on the um, site? It just doesn't look like there's uh, enough, and I'm not sure if that's. I assume that's been calculated, but uh, comparison to what we have now at the high school, how many parking? Yeah. Spaces uh, we, it's, uh, um, it's 650 total is what we're carrying. And right now we're in the range of 350 uh, under the building. It's not actually underground. It's just under the building. So it's kind of oh. almost level. And then another, so it's, it's in a way, it's almost surface parking with a building over yeah. it. Okay. And then we have another 300 that are in lots out and about around the fields. I think the existing parking is somewhere in the range of 488 or something. 480 is was my recollection. Uh, yeah. somewhere. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, and so, so we'd be looking at a sense. total of um, 650 here? 650. Yeah, that's what we're targeting yeah. right now. Yep. Approximately so, half under and approximately half surface. Okay. Give or take, like 350, three, 300 and change and 300 and change. Um, Diane, do you know what you have for total staff now, like every worker in the building? Because we went by um, some calculations, rules of thumb that are 12 to 15 percent of the enrollment. So it's going to be a larger enrollment in the future. But uh, exactly. It that's is. where I was going. Yeah. It. And um, typically it's um, only the juniors and seniors who drive. It's not all kids because the, the younger kids don't have their license yet. But um, I would say that we're around, I know there's 150 teachers and then we probably have like another uh, 50 admin staff puts you at 200. And then um, 
another, I'm trying to think of all the different groups, like the transportation department, the um, if they end up over cafeteria. here, cafeteria. Yeah, I'd say about 300, John Perella, would you say that's right? Yeah, I would say that's probably even conservative. Yeah. Is it, yeah, is it still parking all around? Do you think about the different? The, there are a couple different um, lots around the building. Yeah, right. So but I think that having having six hundred and fifty spaces will be. I think the greater impact will be for the community use. You know, like if we have an event at night, even if we yeah. have like parent teacher conferences, we always run into a jam uh, with parking when we have parent teacher conferences, and so increasing that capacity will be great. So that was all we were looking at the underground parking. That is all parking, which is on, on grade, sorry, not underground, but is it's that Brian Dakin I saw parking. walking across the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like him. It looks like him. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yes, so basically one the entry side of the building it burns up whereas the back side it's obviously open to let the water out these are some of those bioswale moments that's one uh we can look at bus access which you come up and that's the plaza and a door that gets you in um we have tennis on that side the fields are at eight um i think this is like a view from baseball pretty much I'm pretty far out but that's what you would see any request for views while nasra's driving <laughs> yeah anything anyone want to see i mean granted this is you know in its simplified form but thought it might be helpful because it's been very helpful for our team to understand mm. the site and the verticality and the differences in grade to actually model it so i'll request a quick one how about from yeah, the middle please. of the rotary oh the middle of the rotary sure like you're sitting in traffic having a coffee exactly Brian. staring yeah. at it <laughs> yeah. just, just sort of a, how does it address the road how does it address the plaza out in front of it i think that that's as these things come together this is interesting stuff to see okay yeah. so let's see i think he's he's wanting yep. to be going nope. south around good. the rotary oh, yeah, okay so there's oh, a you want to go south okay yep no from <laughs> right out on that street basically that that's the perspective i think would be interesting there you go to see. yeah yeah hopefully Put you're not looking at you don't want to be looking at the building when you enter that rotary. I don't think we see it. Let me try. Hold on. Let me control it a bit. I'm in a building across the street. Okay. You would see it. I have like, I have very dense trees. I have like 40 yeah. old trees. But in yeah, the winter, you'll quite... see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, good point, and though. These trees will yeah, be much those smaller. Those are old trees. They're going to be much smaller. Yeah. 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 Well, when they while, start, they will be, but eventually yeah, they'll get bigger. Eventually they'll, yeah. they'll mature, yeah. and then you mm -hmm. would have this quite majestic view. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, I think I just, I really love the idea of having all of this green space and trees and place to move and feeling like it's an actual place, a location. Because the current high school is just, it's just like a cement blob. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's a nice campus. Yeah. And we're trying to buffer the, even the, you know, the, if you think about the site plan that I showed and if Nazra were to zoom out a little bit, we're trying to buffer the street level with, you know, even the, the health and wellness path so that you don't feel like you're on the VFW Parkway or on, yeah. you know, on the surface road of the campus, we've even talked about maybe the, the road and the sidewalk separate and you have this like planting buffer. So I keep talking about the, um, if anyone's walked around Alewife Station, like you're at a major rotary, there's a train station, there's all this traffic going on around you. But the way that that was um, that walkway at, over there at Alewife Parkway was designed you can literally be right down from route two and not feel like you're you know right next to a car that it's so beautifully well done that you know the health and wellness connection to this wants to um have that same look and feel yeah so. and even some of this boundary to the main road kind of 
firms up. So if you're firms. standing here, you don't feel like you're on the side of a highway. But. Right. And you don't see the entry until you come onto campus. You'll, you'll know that there's a building there. But, um, and this will come from the plan discussion that I'm about to have. But Nazar, will you point out where the auditorium is he, um, in this particular, you can kind of see the fly there. Yep. Um, it's right on the here. North, there. Um, it's sort of orthogonal with the heart of the school uh, on the north-south axis of the building. Um, it, when I spoke last month about some of the precedents, and remember we talked about the exterior of the auditorium kind of being uh, an architectural feature, and we got some feedback on that, which was great to hear. Um, we're looking at a plan version that rotates that auditorium. This shows the orthogonal as it was shown in, mm -hmm. um, at the end of PSR. Uh, but what would that do as you kind of come onto campus, you see this piece of the building, it ties it nicely um, to the heart of the school from the inside, but also becomes an element on the outside that's like, you know, says, hey, come check me out. I'm right near the front entry of the building. It kind of gives you a destination as you're on the campus. So um, that has yet to be sort of developed from a site standpoint, but from a building standpoint, we're studying it and you're about to see it in the floor plans. So. Mm -hmm. I can stop sharing unless anyone has any questions. Yeah, any other requests? Uh, I one, one thing I see lacking is something we get a lot of requests for, and we even get, um, you know, COVID or no COVID, some outdoor spaces with some shade. And I, I do see a ton of trees, and that does produce a lot of shade. But I, I'd be looking for some outdoor spaces that you could actually take a class to. Uh, and and create some outdoor classrooms that are protected from rain or sun, you know. So some more shade structures that would um, you know, present the opportunity to bring a class outside or or you know get some people outside who don't technically need to be in the sun, especially around the the sporting fields and things like that. A lot of the older spectators, I see them. They come up. They set up umbrellas. They they find whatever shade they can be, and they they go they go after it. So, any any type of you know natural you know shade barriers. I not so I should say non natural, but some more roofing structures like some outdoor you know shaded areas that people could collaborate in. That's a great point, Carl. We will definitely incorporate more of that. Thank you. Okay. Great point. Okay. Dan, do you mind driving since you still have it open? For on thank just a matter of plans. What's that? So thank or, you, Nasser. Good driving. I didn't yeah, get sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And great job with the model, Nasra. She's she's doing a great job. Okay, so this is these are some diagrams and precedents. I took the ones that were not as appealing off, but just as a reminder, we talked about sort of the anatomy of the wave and how it ties to you know, the Revere Beach and the, the history of Revere and just some of the precedents, but wanted to remind you this, the yellow auditorium space um, is the, what I was just hinting at and looking at the rotation of that, as well as that upper curve, the blue dotted um, arrow to the north, uh, looking at going from an orthogonal gym building to more of a natural curves, um, similar to the academic wing. So if you want to go forward for me, Dan, I'm just going to set the stage with the PSR plan, which is this, um, but show you that the, the rotation of the auditorium to the right and then the curve of the gymnasium wing, um, just in keeping with the sort of anatomy of wa the wave um, concept. If you would move forward to where we are currently studying, Dan, the next slide. Uh, we have a question. Hey, Ralph, you have oh, a question? I think that is to wait till public comment. Yeah. It's, okay. not, it's okay. not, well, this is kind of important about, because you were doing the driving, it's, it's, it's not going to be something nasty, Dr. Kelly. It has to do, I, I know we were doing common air, we were having a community area. I was trying to see where that was in the layout, because it's kind of relative, I wanted to see where the accessible parking was in relationship to that. Because I know there was accessible parking at the main entrance, but I thought in the com like in the community area was going to be cordoned off from the building. That was going to be a separate entrance. So I wanted to see if there was accessible parking located where that's going to be. 
Well, I can answer a piece of it. I think that um, when we're talking about the parking under the building, we'll need to have accessible parking there. And that's why I asked about the elevators to make sure that mm -hmm. um, coming up into the heart of the school from that uh, parking area would be accessible to anybody who needed so for the elevators. common area, So the common area is going to be, because I know in the initial calls, we were going to have the, the community area was going to be it wasn't going to be access to the rest of the school. Is, has that changed? No, but the community area will be connected to that whole heart of the school piece. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. I was unsure what the community space that was being referenced. Yeah, that's, that's where we are talking about. Public okay. Right. Like you kind of show it right here, the auditorium, yeah. the music wing, the common community health. Um, you know what I mean? Like all of that would be theoretically used by um in the calf commons used by the uh, the community after school hours and that's what i thought but i didn't want to assume that's what ralph's question was about yeah. so i didn't know if it was a specific space like community health so just for reference there there will be accessible parking near the main entry um down uh with access to the community health as well as under the building and then obviously at the dispersed parking areas throughout the like each parking lot will have accessible parking so mm -hmm. um there will be at least code minimum which is five percent but there um potentially could be more just based on how many different parking lots we have so um very much at the forefront of what we're thinking as far as access and universal design so thank mm -hmm. you Okay, great. So um, from the previous PSR plan, you can see that the auditorium uh, rotated to have sort of a better connection to the heart of the school, more direct access. And we've got this large stair that could be used for performances or, or community gatherings, uh, school gatherings that leads out to this exterior courtyard. So both from a north-south access um, and connection, both from the, main, the secondary entry as well as the main entry, we also have these connections to the outdoors on the west side to the courtyard and then connection to the auditorium. So what that did, and then you can see that the gymnasium wing sort of curves out to create this like, um, you know, a, a widened courtyard um, that hopefully will connect um, to the landscape nicely. So while you're in that heart of the school, although you'll be elevated from grade, you'll have direct um, outdoor connection. And that courtyard will be used for many different things and will be developed much further as far as what's actually in there. But the connection to outdoors becomes critical through that part of the school. And you can see that the curve of the gym is subtle in the same way that the, the curve of the um, classroom bars are also subtle. It, but for the most part, not a lot of the program has shifted around a few things here and there. The music had to, the music classrooms had to rotate based on the auditorium rotated, but it's all still directly connected and easy access to the stage um, as it always was for, for their use for performances. Uh, do you want to so go? The one, the go one ahead, thing Donna. I'm one, wondering about on this is I think that what we had talked about, if it's even possible to do, is have the auditorium set up so that almost the stage is two-sided. So there could be indoor performances and outdoor performances. Does that make any sense? Yes, and we've definitely talked about that. And our team is pushing so hard to still make that happen. It becomes, okay. I'll tell you where the challenge is and why we're still struggling with it. I haven't quite resolved it yet, but it's it comes up in every conversation we have. Um, because the building is elevated, you need to get that land up to it so that it's not um, mm. like on stilts at the front, if you can imagine. But then what you want to do is have that stage elevated and have the seating go back down. So, or I'm sorry, go up from there because you want people to be able to look down at any sort of performance that would be on the two-sided stage. So we're just struggling with you're already built up and then you're building up more. So we, we're still working through it and we still are like, that's our goal to make happen. So I'm glad you brought it up because... Um, Every site plan we we look at and every option we we are studying, that's still something that we're saying, how can we make that happen? So great observation and we're it, we're struggling, but we're working really hard to try and make it happen. So 
Okay, we haven't thank forgotten. You. And it, I, I do think it will be a huge asset to this um, building. So, mm -hmm. and I, Bob's not chiming in, but I know between he and I, we bring it up literally every time we talk about the auditorium. So we're still working on it. Okay. Fingers thank crossed you. we can make that happen. You are welcome. We'll see if we can work our magic. <laughs> And if we can, we'll fly through it next time with Nazra's help. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anything else on the first floor? I'm going to buzz through this, uh, the upper floors because not a lot has changed except for the, again, the rotation of the auditorium and the, the curve of the gymnasium. Um, the art and tech rotated above the music, um, but not a lot of the program has changed actually at all some of the openings to below to have that verticality and connection through the heart of the school. Um, some of the geometries change, but nothing substantial. There's a significant um, roof. There's a pretty good size roof terrace in this. There uh, is. And now lab on the second floor. Yep. And Nell has pointed out that little arrow. It's probably hard for those to, for you to read on the graphic, but it says ocean views, like from that terrace you can see out to the east and, and get ocean views. So that could easily oh. be used for outdoor easel work or, you know, maybe, so, uh, you know, you have a garage door space that on a nice day like today, 60 degrees, and the kids can go outside and, and um, you know, do whatever program they're doing. Art and tech, um, you know, could be um, maker space or something that the students can just sprawl out and, and do work on. So I think that would be a wonderful space to be on. Uh -huh. back up. I'm going to back up on you too. Cause we didn't really okay. talk about the terrace. We didn't talk about the terrace courtyard. Yeah. So in this study, because again, um, we're continuing to look at how this all connects together there, the auditorium connects to this, um, you know, community stair that has a, uh, that yellow. Yep. Thanks, Stan. Um, performance space. So like a small either platform or something that students could literally sit on the, the, community stare and and watch some sort of you know impromptu performance think glee or something whatever or a more formal performance just recognizing it's in the heart of the school and it's open for all to see but then that connects directly to the what we're trying to do is to tear us down the exterior courtyard so that that first piece under the words would be at the plus 15 that the building is at and then it could step down and take you to a lower level. Maybe that's an outdoor classroom or a covered, to Carl's point, um, a covered area um, that you could take a whole class or two out. And, you know, maybe they're doing a science project or something out there. And then tear us down to grade at the, by the end of the wings um, that would take you down to actually the road level. So with that, it affects some of the parking. Um, and you'll see at the end, there's a, there's a, um, a parking plan that recognizes some of those um, extractions from the under, you know, the parking under the building. Because once you tear us down, you can't put parking under the lowest level. Um, so we're still working on that. But that's one component to this as you're at the main level, you're elevated. And how does that then connect down to the landscape? So that could be quite a dynamic and exciting space as well. Thanks, Dan, for pointing that out. We'll cut a section through that as we develop it further so you can kind of see how that all um, will connect. And you'd also, for what it's worth, is if you want to go back up to the second floor, Dan, that second floor, CAF Commons, would look down on that. So from both that tech space as well as the um, the white air. Yeah, perfect. So if you're just kind of walking from one wing over to the gymnasium, you're still connected looking down on that um, terraced courtyard. One thing that's nice about that terrace is when you're driving around the back of the building, Rather than seeing a sea of columns, which is what you're in the underground parking, you, that terrace would come down to meet you. So you would only really see that part, just to perceive that parking at the actual building portions. Right. The north and south of that. Yep. You would see it here. There. And you would see and it here, there. but you wouldn't see this, that elevation like that all the way along this edge. Yeah. You'd kind of see, you know, landscape and then stepped up and landscape. I think one of my precedent images showed a sort of a terraced um, mm -hmm component to one of the schools. Thanks, Dan. Um, so do you want to go up to three? Not a lot of has changed program wise. Uh, we still have the media commons here. And again, that would look down on that courtyard from the heart of the school. There's vertical openings that connect you down. So while we're three and four stories tall, we're still trying to make all these connections vertically through that heart of the school. Um, 
the art and tech again is to the north. That would be one story up from that roof terrace that we were just talking about. They could easily go downstairs and use it though, if needed. We could have access off the heart of the school if that was desired. Um, you wanna go up to the fourth floor, Dan? Nothing literally has changed here. <laughs> so, um, and then last, I think I put the parking after just cause I wanted to highlight some of the auditorium moves. But you can see that the terrace has um, taken some of the underground parking. So we're at 334 instead of 350-ish here. So we're still balancing surface parking and um, underbuilding parking to get us to the 650 that we're targeting. And those orange arrows just describe where a car may act, um, have access in and out. So it would only be from the west because if you the if you imagine the fly through that Nazra took us, the front is bermed into the hill. So you don't even know that there's parking under there because it's up against earth. So yeah, along there. Nice. So that was the building update, site and building. Um, you know, we're obviously looking at some massing and starting to think about materials because that's all going to be underway with the interior and exterior working group. Um, any questions, any concerns, anything anyone wants to point out or have us look at? Nothing. <laughs> no, it looks great. Great. Thank you. I mean, we're, we're still studying, you know, a few things. And as some of these working groups and user group meetings happen, uh, it'll ever evolve until we get to the end of SD to put a pricing set together which is later this right. summer, but we're very much underway with schematic design. No rest for the weary. <laughs> no, it might be good to note that the service in this scheme, in these schemes, the service area <laughs> entrance is actually being shown at the lowest level, the garage level. Yeah, so when I pointed out the site plan study, I know that there were conversations, maybe it's best to have it at the plus 15, the first floor level. Here it tucks nicely um, at the, at the Parking level, the street level, the, is that plus? plus it's four? basically plus four. Plus four at that point. And mm -hmm. then you have a loading yeah. dock. So anyway, some of the um, the numbers are lost in my brain right now, but basically you could back up from that surface road uh, into, this, into the service area and have room for dumpsters, compactors, and some uh, large 18 wheel deliveries as well. But One bonus of this is that there's there's a uh, so this free space down here for receiving area of and storage space that is not going to exist on the first floor because right. of the MSB MSBA guidelines will come into play on the upper floor. But the downside so you, is you have to go vertical with everything. Downside is, is you frankly have to take in a four story building to you're going to have to do it at some point anyway. But yeah, so so we're showing a freight elevator coming down into this level yeah Kyle what are your thoughts on that my my initial thought is to thinking about the food and I really can't see a visualize where the food comes in our biggest <laughs> receiving on a regular basis is food and milk and you know mm -hmm. the, the perishables and the things that are going to be frozen immediately and coming frozen and things like that so that's just the path that we need to really think about and say, okay, yeah, the 18 wheeler backed in, but what's our path to a freezer or what's our path to a non-perishable shelf that the food industry is going to be dealing with. And not only that, just the holding area for things that don't need to go right into a food, because what we deal with now is a lot of, okay, here's the truck game plan is get it off the truck and then figure out where it's going. And, that's a constant process all day long on a, on a regular basis. But we do need some type of holding area to say, okay, this just came off the truck, but there's another truck right behind it. So there needs to be some, you know, whether the MSBA is paying for it or not, but some reality of these things come in, they don't disappear once they get off the truck. There needs to be some type of plan to either store them or move them to where they need to go. One thing so nice the, cabin, about this is that the, you, the kitchen right. area is right above this, correct? That's correct. That's could, right. the freight, that's correct. could the freight elevator go right up into the kitchen? Could it be designed yeah. that way? That's that's, that's, that's the way we showing. have it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to see because it's so small. Yeah, but yeah, right, 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 right there. That's the game plan. Yep. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You really need to think, take it in, hold it, and then get it to where it needs to go. But you can't have somebody in another truck waiting for you to do that. It needs sometimes you need a little bit of holding space to receive. That's why they call it shipping and receiving. And yeah. you know, it's it's not doesn't happen at the same exact time. It's it's kind of a process. But so far, everything everything looks great. Uh, I love it. I, I think um, you know, as you get into the nitty gritty, we'll be looking at you know other stuff as far as things like snow and how snow. I'd love to see. The way you would, the way we were driving around that whole thing, I'm thinking, okay, where do you plow? How do you plow? Where do you build piles? And where can you not build a pile? And things like that. It's right now. I see it very functional. Um, mm. You know, and as we move forward, I think you just take those little things that we have at some schools that really work, whether it's the way they put the curb in, and, or whether it's the way they didn't put the curb in. But certain things are the, um, you know, how they're building's going to function I, I think we just got to get into the details everything else looks very, very good yeah what is the thing that's like almost in the middle of yeah right there right there what is that the two elevators elevator, and stair elevator okay. and stair bank the right. elevator bank and stair that bob mentioned that would take okay. yeah. up into the heart of the school yeah okay so this would probably be a secure this area would probably be a secure vestibule but yeah. I think you're going to need a secure vestibule at the lower level. Mm -hmm. And then that would be the elevators and stairs up. And then those, I think, drop right by the admin, if I'm not mistaken. You could go back to the first floor. I, I think will. that's at the edge of the um, auditorium. Yep. It, there it yeah, is, they right? go out there. of the auditorium, but we can. Yep. That's actually perfect. Right. One other thing I was thinking about, I'm glad we backed up to this, is the music in auditorium and stage area could really use some vehicle access to the back or side entrances to it. There's a lot of um, times that we're bringing in, you know, whether it's stage equipment or moving music equipment in or out or things like that, that if there's a way to access that area from the exterior, um, it would be helpful if possible. I know the elevation yeah, is a challenge, but if there's yeah. vehicle access to that area of the building. It kind of has this, um, right? There's an exit right here, and then this is there actually is. at the entrance line, right? Yeah, so this, that's this a good I think, point. Is, is very, it's probably almost flat. Right. Very slightly so, flat. could we make like so a little, like a wider sidewalk there that actually a vehicle could back into and yeah. do a call saying? Yep. yep. So, full disclosure, the site has not caught up with the building because we're yeah. that's how <laughs> that's how this works. Yeah. So, um, we'll keep yeah, that in mind. Absolutely, that that's that a great point. That. Yeah, I just and wasn't I think sure of the elevation there, but I mean that's just fully functional. Is when you're moving stage props, and you know sometimes our band and music uh, classes will take their things and go play at the beach, or they'll go play at another school or another you know, location, and it'd be great to be able to have almost a loading dock functional area that could possibly you be used for other things that access that whole wing of the building, but geared towards that music side of the um, the, the building there. Yeah, great point, Carl. We'll study that. Anything else? No, but I am going to push us a little bit because it's 6.54, <laughs> and I want to... Honor We're everybody's done. time. Yep. So that, that that parking slide was the last slide, except for the okay. closing. Yep. So we're that's the end of what we had. I'm just looking to answer any questions or any concerns or any feedback. So if there aren't any, then I'll turn it back over for. I think public comment is the next thing on the public agenda. Public comments and yeah. I see uh, Ralph's hand up. Yeah, um, Ralph, I'm not sure who's going to, Brian. Ralph, is that an old hand up, Ralph? Are you good? He's good. Okay. Same hand. <laughs> I was going to, I just had one, uh, two quick comments to make. Um, one with the, um, with the talk of the Dunn Road and the Dunn Road extension, there would probably, I'm not sure how access is, good. you're looking to access Dunn Road, but I know Sagamore off of Revere Street right now, it's in the books and the ordinance that Sagamore Street is only open for residents between seven and nine o'clock. So that's yep. something that would have to that's get changed point. if you're looking to have teachers get mm -hmm. gone 
get down the road for that. So I just wanted to make a comment on that. And secondly, if that does get done, I'm hoping that down the road would have like some type of a gate with a key card for faculty to be open and only be able to access that if you're going to use it just for faculty uh, or things like that. That would be good. This way you won't have so many cars protruding through the residency, the residence, uh, residential neighborhood down there, because uh, I know that has been a big issue down there. And that's why they had changed Sagamore. So I just wanted to make that comment. Ralph, I think that's a great point. Now is in the back of my head. I think if we can succeed on getting the Dunn Road to connect, I, I personally think a key to that is probably going to be limited access. It might end up being just staff, might end up being something else, but knowing those streets between between Revere and down into there, um, I think exactly what you're talking about is what we'd have to look at. And the other reason is we don't want to start creating cut throughs uh, around lights where suddenly every commuter in the world knows there's a little uh, shortcut. So mm. I think chances are if we connect in the back, it'll be controlled access with um, cards or something else, some type of gate. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Not motion to adjourn. So moved. Anybody want a second? Second. Seconded. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. <laughs> All I've right. I've seen a motion to adjourn fail. I've been waiting for it. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> All right. Roll call. Stacy Rousseau. Yes. All right. Dr. Kelly. Yes. Carl Svensson. Yes. John Perella. Yes. <laughs> Rich Viscay. Yes. Nick Rystrom. Yes. And Jerry Visconti. Yes. Excellent. Motion to adjourn approved. Thank you, everyone. Everybody, everybody. have a great night. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice night. Make sure you have a pint of Guinness before you go to sleep.